an intuitive explanation of analog electronics. Let's talk about capacitors and inductors. So we'll describe these two new components uh, in terms of the hydraulic analogy in which current in uh, wires are represented as pipes that hold the fluid and a resistor is a constriction in that pipe and a battery or voltage source um, here it is with a plus on one side and a minus on the other uh, the analogy is a displacement pump like uh, this one over here here we have an electric motor powered by uh, electricity that runs this pump that takes water in from this input and pumps it out forcefully in this output. So back to Falstad, here we have a battery that in the hydraulic analogy is a pump that pumps high pressure fluid through a resistor and up to a switch or valve and if we close the switch, i.e. open the valve, then you get a flow of current from the plus side of the battery or the uh, positive side of the pump through the resistor. And now that there's a flow, there's a drop of voltage through the resistor as shown here in the uh, green uh, fading to gray. And if we open the switch, the uh, uh, current stops. In fact, if we put a scope on this resistor and watch when we close the switch or open the valve, the voltage jumps up to 5 volts and the current jumps up to uh, 5 milliamps. And if we open the circuit, then we get the voltage drops to zero and so does the current. So what about the hydraulic analogy for a capacitor. First of all, every wire has a capacitance, uh, just as every wire has an inductance, and every wire uh, has a resistance. These are fundamental properties of the wire. An ideal wire might have zero resistance, but any real wire has some kind of resistance, and it has capacitance and inductance. So let's take a look at the hydraulic analogy. Here's a hose pipe with zero pressure across it. If we increase the pressure, the hose pipe has a certain flex to it and it will bulge under the pressure. That is capacitance. Here's a more direct hydraulic model of a capacitor. Picture a swelling in a pipe with an elastic membrane across the pipe such that a pressure difference across the pipe will flex the diaphragm to one side or the other. This is the hydraulic analogy for a capacitor in an electric circuit. If you turn on a constant voltage, the diaphragm will stretch, but only until it reaches its elastic limit. After that, if you reverse the voltage, the diaphragm will flex to the other side, but only until it reaches its elastic limit. Here is the Wikipedia page for a capacitor. There's the um, symbol, uh, circuit symbol for a capacitor. Uh, here's a very um, simple early capacitor that was composed of two steel plates, very close to each other, but with an air gap in between. If you put a charge on, uh, say, a positive charge on the left plate, it will induce a negative charge on the right plate because opposite charges attract. Now there's also a issue of a dielectric, the insulator between the two plates. In this case the insulator is just air, but you, nowadays they use a thin sheet of uh, insulator. And when you put a charge on the capacitor every single atom in the um, dielectric 
the electrons lean towards the positive plate and the positive protons lean towards the negative plate and thus the dielectric uh, holds some of the voltage difference between the two plates. In other words, it increases the capacitance of the capacitor. Okay, back to Falstad. We'll use V to set up a, a voltage source. Then we'll have S for a switch here. We'll leave the switch open. Then we'll have C for a capacitor across here. And then R for a resistor to complete the circuit. Now we'll also right click on the capacitor and say view in new scope. This scope is showing a trace of the voltage and current through the capacitor. Now let's see what happens when we close this switch. The current jumps up the yellow trace in a spike and then tapers slowly off while the voltage in the green trace ramps up slowly and reaches the saturation. If I open this switch now, nothing changes because the, the voltage is on the capacitor and I can open and close this uh, switch. Now let's add another, we'll say S for switch. And again, we'll make this open and then we'll add a, a resistor across the bottom here and then W for a wire down here. Now let's see what happens. We have a charge on the capacitor and here's our discharging cir circuit that will short circuit these through a resistor. So if I close this switch, look what happens. There's a negative current. You see the little yellow dots going the other way that spikes down and then uh, comes back up again. And the where's the voltage uh, tapers back down to zero. So one more time, we'll open this switch and we'll charge up the capacitor. And there we see the same performance, a spike in current that tapers off while the voltage ramps up. Then if we open this switch and close that one, now we get the opposite, that the current spikes down and the voltage depletes from the capacitor. So what we see here is that the capacitor is uh, performing uh, both a mathematical derivative in the current that spikes up to recognize the change in the switch, and also an integral with the um, voltage accumulating in the capacitor. Okay, back to the Wikipedia page for the capacitor. Let's look at the uh, equations for cur current and uh, voltage. So here's the current equation. The current is uh, proportional to the time derivative dv by dt of the voltage. So here the current is doing a derivative, a mathematical derivative. Here's the voltage is defined as the uh, integral of the current over time. So here the voltage is doing a mathematical integral. Okay, over to that other component, the uh, inductor, um, also called a coil because it really is just a, uh, a coil of wire. It is uh, an electronic component that is optimized to produce the most inductance. Now, what is inductance? Well, as with resistance and, uh, 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 and capacitance, every wire also has an inductance. This reduces to a very fundamental uh, principle of electromagnetism that whenever there's a current through a wire, there will also be a magnetic field caused by the current through the wire. Here we have a circuit with just a wire, and uh, if we close the switch, immediately uh, a magnetic field appears on the wire. But if you take a closer look, 
The uh, magnetic field does not appear instantaneously, but it builds up over time until it reaches a maximum and then it stays uh, uh, stable. Likewise, when you open the uh, switch, the magnetic field does not disappear altogether uh, right away, but rather it decays in stages and as it decays, it induces a current in the wire. This is a curious uh, case of uh, action and reaction being equal and opposite, because as the current builds up the magnetic field, the magnetic field is actually opposed to the current. It goes in the opposite direction to the current. So the current has to pour energy into the growing magnetic field to spin it up to speed. The hydraulic analogy for the inductor is a uh, turbine, like in uh, the turbine portion of a jet engine, that uh, when the current flows through the turbine, it spins it up to speed, but the turbine at first resists the current until it gets up to speed. Here's a um, inductor capacitor or LC circuit here in an analogy starting with the capacitor completely charged uh, at T equals zero. Then as soon as we start, the uh, capacitor discharges through the inductor, spinning it up slowly up to speed. And by the time the capacitor reaches the neutral state, the uh, inertial energy, the rotational inertia of the uh, turbine continues to pump fluid through to the other side until the capacitor gets charged back up in the opposite direction uh, and the whole cycle can start again. The secret of the coil is that each loop of the coil creates its own magnetic field and all of these fields merge into a larger magnetic field as if the field of a bar magnet. Back to Paul Falstad's most excellent uh, uh, circuit simulator program. We'll start with V, a voltage source, then we'll add S, a switch, and we'll, let's make it initially open. And then we'll add Shift L, capital L, is the inductor. And now R, a resistor to complete the wire, the circuit. We'll also uh, take a uh, right click here and view in scope of the uh, of the coil. Now let's uh, run the simulation and close the switch and take a look down here on the plot trace. Now let me just stop and zoom in a little bit. And what do we see? <clears throat> we saw the same thing we saw with the capacitor. We've got a derivative here in green, and we've got an integral there in yellow. Uh, so uh, again, we've got a very simple component performing math, an integral and a derivative, but this time it's the other way around. The voltage is the derivative and the current is the integral. You can see that in the equations for the inductor, the voltage is the inductance times the derivative of the current, di by dt, while the current is 1 over the inductance times the integral of the voltage over time. So the action of these two components is uh, complementary. The capacitor fully charged here induces a current. The current spins up the inductor or the turbine wheel in the hydraulic analogy. And just as the capacitor reaches a full discharge, the inertia of the inductor continues to pump current through until the capacitor is charged the other way. 
So back to Falstad, let's start with a C a capacitor and then we'll add a wire W. Then over here, an inductor, capital L. And a wire to complete the circuit. So here we have the same uh, LC circuit. And now we'll add a power supply. So V for voltage and W for, uh, sorry, uh, S for a switch. We'll make it initially open and then uh, a resistor at the top. Now uh, we'll put a trace on the capacitor and another trace on the inductor and right click will stack these two traces so they're both on the same timeline. Now let's Close the switch and see what happens. First, we're charging up the capacitor. And once we get it all charged up, then we'll open the switch and watch the LC circuit start to oscillate where the voltage dip in the inductor matches the volt and peak, voltage peak in the capacitor. This is a full LC oscillating circuit. When you first boot up um, Falstad simulator, this is by default the circuit that appears. And this is indeed an LC circuit. There's the coil or inductor and here's the capacitor. Uh, and this is the charging circuit. If I close this switch, it charges up the uh, uh, the inductor with a high current and then when we open the switch we see the oscillation this is the inductor uh, and this is the uh, capacitor and this uh, demonstrates an oscillating circuit so that's the hydraulic analogy for these two dynamic uh, electronic components, the caps and coils, the capacitor and the inductor.